Good afternoon and welcome to the homestead. If you saw one of our most recent videos, you know that we have a salty well. We just found that out and it's been killing our garden for over seven years. We haven't had these rainwater tanks installed for very long, but unfortunately they are not connected to our irrigation system for our greenhouse and our garden. But that is what we are gonna start working on today. This is part of our whole rainwater collection series, and if you want to see those videos, you can click on them at the top of the screen. We borrowed a fun toy from a friend of mine, and we are going to start trenching around the property to bury our poly supply lines. We're also in the process of moving our jet pump, and you'll see why later. We need to replumb everything, and then we'll be adding a good sized pressure tank so that it takes a lot of the load off of that jet pump from keeping it from running all the time. Now it's time to have some fun and get digging. First thing I need to do is get this slimmer bucket on the arm because digging this trench, I really don't need a super wide trench. It's just for that one poly line. Well, we got our trenching done, but something happened in the last two feet that I'm sure a lot of you have experienced. And you know if you've used an excavator on your property in any place and you didn't set up the property, you are going to hit somebody else's old work. And that's what we did right here. Hit some water lines, I had no idea they were there. So you should always have extra repair couplings, PVC, other couplings, glue on hand because you never know when you're gonna be doing work and you can't take a 50 mile round trip to the nearest town. We're putting our poly line in and I need another section of line to go on the end of this. In my opinion, this is a bit easier than doing PVC just because it's, it's quite flexible. Although when it's colder, it's a little more inflexible. And you need to put these barbed connectors in the end of it. But since it is cold, you're not pushing that in. So what you need to do is to heat up the end of it with a torch. Then you're going to secure it with a stainless steel hose clamp. Make sure it's stainless steel hose clamp because it is going below ground. And also make sure when you're heating up the plastic at the end, even though these are quite thick walled, don't melt the plastic, don't burn the plastic because it's a water line. You're gonna be in trouble if you weaken it too much. Now I've done it where I've laid these out in the sun before and that also works if it's in the middle of summer you can just hold them outside or um, i mean let them sit out in the sun and you really don't need the torch that's simple just slips right in and we're going to put on our hose clamp Make sure when you connect the other end, to put your hose clamp on first, so you're not pulling it back out. Don't worry, it stays hot for a little while, so. You have to take a few seconds to get it on there. It's not a problem. You're good to go. I finally found a pressure tank. I had to go about 45 miles for it, but here it is, and I'm super happy to have it. Now I am dry fitting and designing in all of the components for the jet pump and the pressure tank in its new configuration. And I'm adding a few parts that I probably needed on the last design, and I will show you what those are. But the reason to do the pressure tank with the jet pump is to take a lot of the workload off of the jet pump. If I'm out there and I'm watering and irrigating with the rainwater system without the pressure tank, this pump would be constantly running. So that's not good for the longevity of it, although it's a good brand, it will go for many years. But I do want to save it the best that I can and having a pressure tank along with that is going to do that. So from our rainwater tanks, we have the supply side in to our jet pump and then our pressure out of the jet pump. That will run over and incorporate a few different items. One of them first is this check valve. And that's just a safety piece so that we don't get any sort of pressure back into the jet pump in reverse. 
The next thing I want to show you is this spin down filter. So instead of putting any sort of a media filter on here, I'm just going to have what's called this spin down filter and that will catch sediment, any sediment that gets through my pump from going into my tank and then subsequently out through my system and through my irrigation lines, which I don't want. Those will be in line here and to be able to service these, if I need to service them, I'm going to have these threaded unions at this point, one here and one on the other side between the pump and the tank. From this point, we're going to come into our pressure tank. We've got our pressure gauge, our drain valve, our relief valve, and our pressure switch. This switch will be wired for pressure. The switch over here on the jet pump, as you can see, I've taken off the pressure line. So this will be wired the exact same as normal, but as long as I keep this line disconnected, it will just get power from this one over here. And this one will act as the pressure, and this one will just act in powering the pump itself. And here's our dry fit. We've got our union there. This is the supply in, the discharge out. We've got our check valve, our spin down. We've got unions in both places to take those parts out if we need to. Down here, we're wired into our tank pump. So we've got our line in from our panel and since it is 230, 240, we've got hot one and hot two and those are to the outside screws on the top and then of course our ground to the bottom. We don't need a neutral in this case. And then matching the wires, the whites on this side and the blacks on this side, this is our power out on these two to our other pressure switch on our jet pump. And then those go outside to outside, same configuration. And then these are per manufacturer specs to power the pump. Come out of our pressure tank, we've got another union, and then out to our well house, which is all the way down over there. So I need to glue everything up, make 100% sure that it's in the right spot. And then this inlet right here on the top is where you prime your pump. You have to pour, I think it's over a half gallon for this particular pump inside first. Do not start the pump. Do not turn on the power without water inside. The inlet for this is not very big at all. It's only about three eighths of an inch. So you're going to be here for a while gently filling this thing up. Now let me show you the final connection piece for the entire system to get this rainwater into my irrigation system and past my well. This is the last piece of the puzzle. This is a three-way valve. What I'm going to have is the supply on the bottom, the well on this right side here, and the rainwater tanks coming in from the left. So I can manually switch and potentially mix, depending on how I manipulate the valve, potentially mix the two waters together. But I will be able to switch between the well and the rainwater tanks. And I need that rainwater to be able to flush that nasty salt out of my greenhouse and out of my garden. If you have any comments or questions, please leave them for me in the comment section below. Now go check out these videos right here, which is our entire playlist on our rainwater collection system. Have a beautiful blessed day. We'll see you next time. Bye.